So as you look at specific weather events, as you look at weather and climate related risks, both of those disclosure, disclosures hinge on materiality assessments. And the GC almost needs to insert themselves into a sustainability regime and ESG and investor relations folks who have their own kind of uh, stakeholders that they're sort of reporting to and make sure the SEC disclosure piece gets um, considered in the process. Joining me today is Gail Makode, Chief Legal Officer and General Counsel with Omega Healthcare Investors. Gail, thanks so much for joining us today. Thank you. Now, how are REIT GCs managing the risks and rewards of new AI-powered products and services, and what are some of the potential legal challenges they pose? Uh, I'll start with the legal challenges, because, of course, that's how all GCs start. Um, you know, we're really concerned primarily with the inputs into the system. So, particularly for public companies, but really for any company, there's a risk with the inputs that you put in that you lose confidentiality protections, IP protections on the input as it gets ingested into these large language learning models. Um, so that's the primary concern. There's also a concern with the output. So with respect to the output, you need to check for accuracy. They're, not, they're notorious for being like the uber eager intern. Uh, that's what the AI model really is. It's this intern that pulls all this data for you but doesn't necessarily think about it or double check. There are accuracy issues related to the time frame the language model was learning on. So chat GPT-4, for example, learns up to 2019. And after that, it's kind of, you know, who knows. Um, and then also with respect to the accuracy, if you're using the output in a customer-facing way, um, there's sort of the converse risk with the inputs of uh, IP infringement. So you could be infringing on another party's IP, which is part of why the New York Times is sued OpenAI. And so there are a number of risks on the output and input side. Um, but I, that said, that's mostly with regard to public generative AI. So a lot of GCs are starting to look at private, you know, enterprise versions of AI tools. A very popular one right now is Microsoft Copilot, which was recently launched and presents potentially some of these issues. Um, I think a lot of GCs are starting to learn about it. We're being sort of dragged along. And there are business use cases. You know, if you can protect your IP, if you can protect your confidential information, you might be able to use it you know, for internal purposes. Um, so that's a business use case. Uh, and REIT GCs are looking at lease abstractions, routine contract reviews, NDA reviews as well. And another common theme here at this year's REITWISE is cyber risk. Yes. What are some of the steps that REIT GCs are doing to help defend their companies in this area? So I think traditionally for many years now, REIT GCs have been involved in incident response plans, managing board governance related to cyber, getting to know the cyber insurance carrier and the experts that they rely on and you know, leaning heavily on that. I think what's new in the past year is the new cyber rules that the SEC's come out with, which put a tighter focus on materiality determinations and disclosure requirements. So REIT GCs in particular, I think, and GCs in general, um, just need to be that much more involved in materiality assessments. So as an incident involves, as a risk evolves, making sure there's an escalation process and a disclosure process in place. And finally, of course, the big topic here at yes. Rewise uh, is the SEC's much-awaited climate change disclosure rule, which was issued March 6. Right. I, I know everyone's still kind of digesting it, right. but what will the role of a REIT GC be in climate change reporting to the SEC going forward? And, and does the, the rule change what that might have been? Like with the cyber rules, I think it puts a much finer point on materiality assessments, and I think the GC has an incredibly important role to play there. So as you look at specific weather events, as you look at weather and climate related risks, both of those disclosure, disclosures hinge on materiality assessments. And the GC almost needs to insert themselves into a sustainability regime and ESG and investor relations folks who have their own kind of uh, stakeholders that they're sort of reporting to and make sure the SEC disclosure piece gets um, considered in the process.